It gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to this pleasant session, the lecture session organized this morning as part of continuing education, enrichment, enlightenment and empowerment through the process of learning and listening that the South Indian Education Society and the SIES College of Arts, Science and Commerce Empowered Autonomous, a journey that they have begun this year as a precursor both pre and subsequently to the celebration of the university status that this institution would get before the end of the academic year. On the 10th of September 2023, we began this journey with an address by Padma Vibhushan, Professor Dr. Manmohan Sharma on the wonder world of chemistry. To those of you who were fortunate to have been present on the day to witness the pearls of wisdom that came out of that experience this recent and in chemistry, left us at the end of the lecture session to believe that chemistry is just not the elixir of life, chemistry is life itself. He was conferred the honorary patronship of the society on that day. In continuing that journey, to bring you to the wonder world of physics, which at the end of this lecture will make you all believe that the physics of light and matter covers the full encompass of the universe itself and therefore life would not be possible without it. That is the glory and the beauty of science, that every branch of science is essential for human living. And that brings us to the subject of physics and to all of you who have assembled here, undergraduates, postgraduate students in physics, in technology and allied subjects. This journey that Dr. R. Chidambaram will go through this morning is indeed the history of Indian science post-independence. Dr. Chidambaram is the honorary patron of our society. Two decades before, he along with Dr. A.P.J. Abdul Kalam and Dr. K. Kasuri Rangan were conferred the honorary patronship of this society at the SIS College of Art, Science and Commerce Autonomous at the Blessed Hands of the Shankaracharya of Kanchi. For over two decades, he has been actively involved in advising us in the various academic programs that we unfold from time to time for the benefit of the student community. He has been conferred all possible awards for excellence in the field of his specialization, a world authority on crystallography. I think the stamp of atomic nuclear power has come more to him than the full aspect of physics that he has mastered all through his lifetime, starting from the presidency college. He was conferred the highest, second highest civilian award, the Padma Vibhushan, by the government of India. But I suspect that he loves the C. V. Raman medal, which he received it in 2013, as far more cherished by him than other awards that have come his way. That is the reason why the subject title for this morning, he has given it as India Rising Raman Effect to Nuclear Power, the Journey of Indian Science and Technology. That brings me to speak to you as a, not a distraction, as a digression on Professor C.V. Raman himself. After he retired from the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore in the year 1948, Raman decided to set up his own institution, Raman Research Institute in Bangalore. And that saw the light of the day in the year 1949. Raman Research Institute advertised for three physicists to begin with in that long journey of RRI and the advertisement attracted applications from scientists all over the country, not because they were very keen to join that institution as physicists, because they know there are only three people who can be taken, but all of them did that in the belief that they will get a chance to meet this wonderful scientist that the world has ever got. 
So as applications poured in, they were shortlisted after the screening interviews and five were given the privilege of being interviewed at the last interview by Professor C.V. Raman himself. And he selected three out of them to be appointed as physicists, first physicists in RRI. The next morning, as he came out for a walk in the campus before getting into his work, he saw a young lad sitting outside his office. He inquired of him why is he sitting. He said, I want to meet you, sir. He asked, is there any problem? He said, of course not. Then he said, what is the problem? The young lad said, yesterday I didn't get selected for the post of physicist. That's fine, sir. But the account department reimbursed me for my expenditure for coming for this interview, rupees seven in excess of what is due to me. By the time I ran to give the money to the account department, it was closed for the day. And the accountant said, keep it with you and enjoy. I could not believe that I can keep anybody's money which does not belong to me. Therefore, the only option that was left for me was to wait for you, sir, and hand over this money to you. Raman walked a few paces, turned back and told the boy, come tomorrow morning at 10.30 to meet me. And then when he came, because the privilege of meeting Sir C.V. Raman was far more than anything else, he told him that you failed as a physicist before me but you succeeded as a human being. I have created one more post and I am appointing you for that post. Talent can be substituted by hard work, by support from the neighboring community as well, and by the richness of the experience that you get on every turn of failure that you have. But values in life can never be substituted by anything. That's why Einstein said, that be not a person of success, but be a person of value. This young lad who got appointed was none other than Professor Subramanyam Chandrasekhar, who won the Nobel Prize in the year 1983, convincingly demonstrating that science alone doesn't make a man. Science and values do make a man. Sir C. V. Raman also had a distinction which is not known to many of us. We have all assembled in a cultural institution. Therefore, I want to tell you that most of the scientists are fascinated by the world of music. C. V. Raman started his journey in the Accountant General's office in West Bengal, in Calcutta. Accountant to the biggest scientist that the country had ever seen, the Raman effect, the light effect which even today is current. That's how the journey is. The flexibility in understanding and the vast ocean of knowledge Raman himself demonstrated from where to where one can go. During those days, Raman was an active member of the Indian Society for Cultivation of Science, started by Mahindralal Sarkar, who was the physician of Swami Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, who was the guru and god of Swami Vivekananda. And therefore, science used to cherish, flourish along with bhajans and kirtans in Mohanlal Sarkar's, Maindralal Sarkar's house and in the institute itself. Raman used to wonder as to how this mridangam or tabla, dolki were all generating noise. And that went into his research in the physics of acoustics and he was able to establish that in the Mridangam there are 21 tension points which give rise to that uh, sound and whatever you see of that Mridangam today or the tabla today is an outcome of the research that Dr. Sivi Raman had done. The message is very clear that you all can succeed in your field of endeavor science or arts or commerce, humanities, social sciences, what not. But there are better things in life which also need to be added to your journey through the profession or the pursuit that you want to follow. And Sir C. V. Raman was one of the finest examples. Dr. Raja Ramanna, 
his predecessor <laughs> and a distinguished scientist again into the nuclear field who was the minister of state for defense in the government of india is one of the greatest pianists that this uh, country has seen his research on music therapy i think is far more relevant and potent than the discoveries that he gave in the field of science and to the same generation and tribe belongs dr chidambaram i have come to hit on this point only i went through that you could have seen dr chidambaram in this auditorium several times during the year enjoying vintage classics that are unfolded from this vyasapeetha the message that i have for you this morning is you will have the best of physics coming out and the world of empowerment that you all can seek through the process of understanding of physics but much beyond that become good human beings and that would be the purpose and the essence of all these lecture sessions that we hold from time to time and the next lecture session is on 20th of january 2024 into the new year by none other than padma vibhushan dr k kasuri rangan on astrophysics and astronomy into the world of space and science that he would unfold on that day he is currently the main trustee of raman research institute and it is another thing about raman i don't this morning so much of raman is coming out that the sis national eminence award for the current year is being conferred on the 16th on saturday the 16th of december 2023 in this very auditorium it is open for all the invitation is extended right from this platform to each one of you to come and witness the awards function the award for science and technology is being given to one of the youngest scientists in this country professor urbashi sinha and uh, yesterday only the public domain carried the message that urbashi was given the canadian excellence research award for 34 scientists across the world <laughs> with a grant of 8 million dollars urbashi is just 40 years old and she has already taken india on to the world map of quantum technologies so do come and get inspired by urbashi as well <laughs> on the before i conclude on the 11th of november 2023 dr chidambaram celebrated the completion of 87 years and began the journey of 88th year in this life so john in this planet earth this ripening age advancing age has not deterred him nor has he stalled with time he is infectious as far as enthusiasm and energy is concerned he still wants to connect with the youth of this country who are the architects of this nation the shapers of its destiny the future of this nation and therefore today morning he has come to share his thoughts and experiences with all of you in the hope that some of you will turn out to be far better scientists could be far better than him as well and lastly lastly nobel laureate sir c v raman was conferred the bharat ratna in the year 1954 probably from the time of jawarlal nehru it was felt that you should have a nobel prize then you will get bharat ratna it has happened like that uh, over these years that is the reason why some of the best scientific minds in the country did not get the highest civilian honors in this country the latest example is professor ms swaminathan who could not be given the bharat ratna and he passed away from the scene to unseen but i am sure that the corridors of powers which confer the highest civilian award will realize that the highest award of this land is far more than any other award and sooner or later i think it will be our pleasure to believe see that the government of india confers the highest award in the bharat ratna on dr arjun birmu he is the 
He is the Swadeshi Open Mirrors with a hand in the 1974 nuclear explosion and the architect of the Pokhran explosion of 1998. May God bless him with a long life. Thank you.